All right, we're here tonight uh, with our experts and special guests for the Bass and Bob uh, videos. Um, we do this once a month, and July is our one-year anniversary. So the first meeting we did last year, we did at Wilmore Lodge, if you recall. We had a big group of people yeah. and our ribbon cutting and a lot of fun. So and we really appreciate you guys helping Bass and Bob the way you do. I mean, it's... It's incredible. It's been one year already. Uh, we have several thousand members that come to our website. Um, just, you know, they really like it. You know, what, this video is one of the most liked things on our website. So. Yeah, that's pretty historic. One yeah. year. Or one year. Yeah. Yep, this is, uh, this is a one year anniversary. So thank you guys very much. We yep. appreciate it. So tonight we have uh, Greg Stoner. He's a special guest. He's the fishery biologist at Lake of the Ozarks. Um, he does sampling of the di different species, is that right, Greg? Uh, yeah, copy and... I monitor the game fish species in the mm -hmm. lake, uh -huh. among other, other duties. Right, and you've been doing that, what, since 1991? 1991. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for being here today. Uh, we have Jack Cups. Everybody knows Jack, the ones that's been following us. Uh, Jack's been a guide on the lake uh, out of Tantara since 2005. And uh, one of him and James, the two best guides on the lake, Jack is a multi-species guy, and as far as I'm concerned, a multi-bait guy that could use, and actually anybody could catch fish on so many different baits, very versatile. So. Pretty comfortable doing yeah. a lot of things. Right. And we have Wayne Fitzpatrick. A lot of our members always talk about Wayne, and uh, I hear from Wayne owns uh, Fitz's Bait and Tackle, or it's Fitz Fishing uh, Tackle and Supply, and many of these, uh, I hear from many anglers, Wayne, that, um, you're so helpful when they go into your shop. I mean, yeah. you know, I hear that a lot. I really hear that, and uh, um, it, it really helps us out. We, you know, we, we really appreciate you being here all the time. You got a world of knowledge that people want to know. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I, I like the people that. I mean, a lot of times you take for granted everybody knows everything. But yeah. Uh, truth is known. They don't. I mean, they don't love. Them need help, you know. Yeah. Good, yeah. Time, well, you do a great job with them, because I do. Yeah. We hear, we really right. hear all the time from yeah. our members that they just, Wayne tells, you know, how it is. So. Yeah. And then we have Jim Dill and Denise Dill. Jim and Denise own Crackle Gator Bait. Um, Jim is also has uh, James Dill Guide Service at the lake. Uh, James is a, tur a successful tournament angler, as many of you know. Um, he puts out some great baits. He may have one or two new ones he wants to show us tonight. One of them, um, I think just uh, a co-angler in a FLW or BFL. Yeah, yeah. Cody Kelly out of uh, Conway, Arkansas. Yeah. He's won a FLW out of the back of the boat. Uh -huh. you know, uh, oh, one of your new down baits, Kentucky, right? Down in Kentucky and then one that, yeah, we're bringing out. Yeah, Actually, we, we brought it out, yeah. We brought it out and uh, he really brought it out this weekend. He was able to catch some pretty good fish behind some of the best anglers in the world. Yeah. You know, so. Wow. Yeah, that's we'll awesome. We'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Appreciate it. And then we have Denise Dill. She's our women's professional advisor. Um, Denise is also a school teacher. And uh, from what I understand, the middle of June you were done. With, so, yeah, so I, actually, I'm going to throw yeah. my first question out to you. So All how's right. it been going since been, uh, you've been out of, you. out of school? Um, with Jim being a guide, I've basically kind of penciled my name in yeah. any open dates that he has so uh -huh. we've, we've been getting out as much as we can and uh, we even have some evenings when we go out and, and fish so. is that right yeah, yeah. and yeah. how's so, that been going i mean we've um, been catching some or we've been right? catching really? some we've been fishing the bluffs and mm -hmm. using our heavier reaction jigs along the bluffs and, is that right and yeah. having a having a good time mm -hmm. so okay. yeah yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad you yeah. finally got a, you know, yeah. school because you were really. First I know you talked. You were looking for that to come to an end so you could get out and fish more. So. You're right. <laughs> um, I want to. I want to propose or bring up to you guys. Uh, we have members on our website that post stuff on forums. They reach out to us. Um, they ask us, um, you know, different questions. And this, this uh, J James Yalem has been a member of ours for. I remember he was one of our very first members who joined our website. And he posted, I'm going to read this to you, and then I would just like for you guys, it, it's basically he's struggling a little bit in the summertime, and he wants some advice. So who else better to ask than you guys? So um, it's James. He goes, I am fairly new to Lake of the Ozarks, and I'm trying to figure out the best patterns for summer bass fishing when the dam is not running much water. So far, I have not 
had much success on the long points with wedges, which ledge drops into some type of river or creek channel. These points used to produce on the White River lakes and Stockton regardless of current. But on Truman and now it seems Lake of the Ozarks, they do not hold bass without current. I haven't had great success on bluffs and I have tried bluff cuts with ledges and some small points on bluffs. I've, I've had some limited success on the bluff ends. So I have some questions about summer bass fishing assuming that Ameren is not running much water. So his first question is, I have read that some catch bass on main lake points. Are these points the rounded ones that do not continue for a long underwater like steeper points and bluff bends? So basically his, his question is, um, are, you know, are these points rounded ones? I, I guess he's just looking for what, what type of points should he be looking for. He knows that that pattern is, um, seems to be the right pattern to do, but he's just not catching so. Uh, I've got to I'd agree days. this year as far as that ledge bite, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't had near the success, you know, me and Wayne was talking about it, mm -hmm. he said they've been doing pretty good, and, uh, I think Jack mentioned, down towards, closer to the dam, it's yeah. happened a little bit, and mm -hmm. any any success we've had has been down towards the dam, where they start running a little water, that's where it's going to affect it, you know, uh, the most down there, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, that it's been, been bluffs. The bluff points mm -hmm. for us they've kind of stayed on it a lot longer this mm -hmm. year where when they start running that water they seem to head out the shad head out mm -hmm. this year we've been sticking closer to bluffs or they're even starting to get into brush piles they're starting yeah. to get brush piles already right? you normally see in july and august now they're they're already in these it seemed like just a, a 18 yeah. 20 mm -hmm. foot brush pile this year more yeah. than any other year that i can remember brush has been a big key uh, bigger and, and and we're seeing it they're already going on to that July pattern and they were doing it back in June because we didn't have that current and the July pattern wrapped up in one word is brush piles yeah. right yeah I mean that's and, that, and that's what they're already doing that are big structure I mean they there's still gonna be some fish out on them points as long as you have uh, a big structure out there that they busted up boulder rocks mm -hmm. they'll stay out there too just like a little brush pile. They just won't be, yeah. They just won't be ganged up in schools like you see right up in Spalm and the running water. Mm -hmm. But you're always going to have some some uh, isolated fish out there on that on that big structure, big boulders and stuff. Mm -hmm. They just won't be schooled yeah. up. Yeah, you, know, you talk uh, the brush piles like normal July, August brush piles. Are you finding any different depths this year, brush piles? I've just been going like to the deeper brush piles. Yeah, so it's. Deeper uh, like normal, say late July, August type. Yeah, stuff. yeah, 15 foot. You know, I might be throwing alongside a dock, but it's, it's kind of like the deeper docks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to where I'll, I'll throw up to like the shallow end of the dock, but the shallow end of the dock is still 12 foot. Yeah, and then I'm working it out to 20 foot at yeah. the at the the deep end yeah. of the dock, and I'm feeling for brush along there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what's you know. In uh, like with James's question as well, the um, Historically, in June, after the spawn, they're usually drawing water. Yeah. Correct. Just you know, yeah. this year has in been a large amount. as far as I can tell. This year has been different than other years. This year has probably the been the least amount mm -hmm. of like heavy generation days that right. I can remember. Yeah. I think there was one week where yeah. we had they're pulling over thirty thousand mm -hmm. um, cubic feet. Yeah, cubic yeah. Feet. You look yeah. today and yesterday it was like eight hundred. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, yeah. so this 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 has been a it seems like it's been an unusual yeah. year. It has, it has and, you know from being frozen to the lack of generation yeah. to um, so how do you think even with according to, does all those factors have an effect um, from what 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 um, James is asking in his forum post? You think I know that, that you know he asked specifically about lack of generations and points. Um, it, it seems like overall we're just kind of not catching as many numbers mm -hmm. as we usually do either. Right, right. I mean, some tournament fishermen are doing good, but mm -hmm. the average guy that I take out, we're not catching as many fish as we normally do. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, maybe it's because of this, this, that, or whatever reason. But it, it's it, you're not the only one. Uh, mm -hmm. He's had a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just, it's just yeah. been not as easy of a year. You got to do things the right way. The first time yeah. you gotta set the hook the right way. Right. There's not a lot of room for error. Yeah. 
I'm going to come back. He, uh, James has a couple more questions here, but on with what Jack said in the you know, the numbers may be down a little bit. I know some of the tournament weights seem to have been down this year. Is there any, as a fishery biologist, is there, in the freeze, or is there anything you could, you know, share with us that may have, uh, why the weights would be down a in, little bit, or maybe the fishing may be a little bit slower? In terms of our sampling, you know, the number of fish we catch per hour and the size of the fish, they weren't any different than mm -hmm. what we've seen in previous years. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a couple things that went on different this year. One was extremely hard winter, mm -hmm. you know, the lake was basically iced over from one end to the other. And there was the big shad kill, mm -hmm. which was essentially lake wide. Mm -hmm. We didn't lose all our shad, we still got plenty of shad out there to spawn and carry on the, the forage base, but I think it was enough that it did change the behavior of these fish. Uh, the thing I really noticed was this spring was the abundance of big black crappie up very shallow. Mm -hmm. uh, something I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see, we generally don't see an abundance of big black crappie in mm -hmm. our trap nets in the fall, and we didn't last fall either. Mm -hmm. But people were sure catching them you know, lake wide this mm -hmm. spring. Why would, it cold been, why would it be different this year, you think? Well, crappie, you know, being a smaller fish, a smaller game fish, they're more reliant on the shad from last year. So if yeah. they lose a large percentage of that, they're looking for other food sources. So the shed that you, the big shed kid we had, you think it was more of the the yearling shed? It was more of the so yearling shed. The, the I mean, there were some few a few larger ones next yeah. year, but for the most part, what, what we see with shed kills is the chance of a fish dying over a hard winter like that is determined to some extent by the amount of fat reserves it has going into the winter. Well, bigger fish has more fat reserves yeah. than you know, a young one that just spawned that year. So generally when we have a shad kill, it's usually that those young of the year fish that we produce that spring that we lose in the great So it'll, it'll affect the smaller fish more. Wow, that's, really, that's great information. We're seeing a lot of shad up on the bank. Now, is there that many that sink to the bottom that you don't see to? Sure. Um, there had to be a lot of big shad kill that must be really, really But we got plenty of them in the lake right now. I mean, yeah. you're seeing them. Now, one thing that's weird about this year, and you guys have probably noticed, is this time of night, and you know, this what July first. Usually, you're seeing them up on the surface. A bunch of stuff right there, yeah, like in that middle there. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Normally, yeah. you're seeing that a lot. This year, yeah. we haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. They've been more, you know, 10 feet to 25 feet just suspended, yeah. and they haven't been on the surface. Right. Even, which is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of different because there's tons of them in the water. You can see them with your fish finders. Either that or the fish finders are just getting a lot better or something, but you know, they the shad feed on plankton, so their position in the water is gonna kinda of determine be determined by where the plankton is at. And by having an extended winter and things get started a little earlier, a little later than normal. Uh, as far as plankton and zooplankton production, that might be impacting what a, what shad. affects the plankton as far as where it's located in the water column. You know, sun, clouds. <laughs> current, how much does that affect? Well, there's actually, zooplankton can actually go through a vertical migration at night where these small microscopic you know, insects and, and all your, your microscopic animals go through a migration vertically close to the surface. So, so as low light, night, yeah. is that, they come up? But with the, with the late winter that we had, the abundance of those plankton might not be where they normally are this time of the year, and if they're not there, these shad may be scattered, you know, instead of putting these big concentrations in them. So the, so the location of the shad has to, a lot to do with just the, the it's, location? It's like any fish, so right. they're going to so find them where their food's yeah. at. Right, right. So, the, so, the, so basically, that's what they're following. It's just that whole thing. Which may be thing. why right. they're not on the points. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I really think that there's going to be some fish caught super, super deep this year. We was catching fish three weeks ago, 35 plus feet deep. That could be why a lot of fishermen are not catching them, they're not fishing deep enough. But as clear as the lake is and all the different situations, I think you're going to see a lot of fish caught really deep also. Yeah, three weeks ago, the thermal climb probably hadn't set up real hard, but I'd say it's, it's getting there. It's not there already. I seen pretty good trace of it the other day. I was really watching on that.
graph. You can see it really far. Yeah. And the jug fishing for the catfish, all of a sudden, I've noticed that in the last week and a half, where I was doing really good drifting, and now jug fishing has all of a sudden gotten a lot better. And which is probably another indicator of. I was going to ask Jack, you were mentioning earlier something about uh, big boats <laughs> on the lake, right? So, um, yeah, damn pretty fast now. <laughs> yeah, we could talk about that a little bit. You know, what me and Dave were talking about is all these big boats, and I'm not talking about just like a 25 or 27 footer or something like that, or even the big pontoon boats. I'm talking about the big cabin cruisers and how much money, you know, how much damage dollar amounts that they're causing. If anybody ever looked at the number of docks that are getting damaged by these really big boats, it'd be staggering. And yeah, maybe something needs to be done about these big boats. I mean, I know Lake of the Ozarks is the place to go and we've all dealt with these big boats and we've all hit these big waves and we've all hurt our back and we've all hurt our trolling motors and different stuff. Equipment. <laughs> equipment. And, and you start thinking about all this, you know, I mean, back surgeries and you start thinking about all the money. It's the... the and then, you know, those, those injuries that happen, you know, when people are skiing out here and different things. You know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of getting tired of it. I mean, I, and I don't even own a dock on the lake even. You know, I talk to some people that, you know, they won't have a dock on the lake of the Ozarks anymore because they're on the main channel. And these big cabin cruisers have done so much damage and it cost them so much money that they say, just take the dock out. And I don't know. What do you guys think about that? It's, it's, it's kind of getting old. Yeah, it's a touchy subject you yeah. know you, you don't want to see anyone not be able to enjoy what they want to but at the same time you know you hate to say more no wake areas but there may be certain areas where mm -hmm. the wake is limited you know to a to an item just right. because you, you get these narrow coves or or certain situations where when they're just pushing water it really really creates havoc yeah. if they can run they're, they're going to run yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm not going to yeah, shut it down. Yeah, I don't open water, you know, I, they're still creating big waves yeah. and damage, but it's a little yeah. different than some of these right. smaller, right. Right. you know. Yeah. Right. I'm just seeing almost more places. I know it's never going to happen, or at least it's probably not going to happen, but those million-dollar boats, those big cabin cruisers, yeah. they're almost, it would be nice if we had a limit on a size, you know, nothing over 40 inches. I mean, everything in the past would be grandfathered in or whatever. But stop selling all these big, big boats. <laughs> I know it ain't gonna happen, but you think about the dollars that are being. I mean, we're talking millions. Oh, no. More, yeah. more money that's being spent in repairs than what's being brought into right. the lake. Right. Well, that's a good point, Jack. And, you know, it's a good point that yeah. you have. Uh, the big boats do affect bass fishing, as to James' point as well. There's, uh, you know, they, they obviously have the right to, you know, enjoy the lake as well. Um, but but maybe if there's a little bit more, some, some type of control, um, a, a few more, you know, no wake idle areas, I think that would definitely yeah. be beneficial. Especially as Wayne said, these skinny coves, just like the, the one here that that one just went down. I mean, it's, uh, there's, there's nothing down there. And to be, yeah, to and be flying, it's, you know, 60 miles an hour down, yeah, that down here. Just, out, you know. The speed really does, is yeah. at where the waves are created. It's mm -hmm. when they're, you know, Plow 20 miles an hour, I yeah. mean, just. Push in the water, and it. So we want some waves here come over the dock here a little mm -hmm. bit ago. I mean, but yeah, I don't know. You yeah, know, getting know back to the, <laughs> the big boats and everything, we've talked about it. Roger, and myself, and Dennis, and even Marcus, and a lot of guys. Believe it or not, that's the big boats. Is why we've got such good fishing down here. Yeah, I middle you know, of summer. I yeah, that gives them fish a break out yeah. of the main lake. Mm -hmm. I'm not out there trying to. Yeah. I mean, if this got lake got hammered as as hard as it could all yeah. summer long with tournaments and everything, then you really would see a, a difference. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yep. Very good yeah. point. Two sides yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah. So still don't like them, but I, yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> Everybody you just know. made some really good yeah. points. Yeah. You know, and you know what? In general, this is July first. Yeah. This is the busiest yeah. month yeah. of the whole year. Yeah. You know, we got one bad month ahead of us. Yeah. You know, everybody here, I mean, August 15th, 
is a date that I look forward to. Mm -hmm. August 15th, unfortunately for people like you, it's going to start. <laughs> it's start. Right. All right. Yeah. And, and for me, I'm, I'm going, whew, it's August 15th. Yeah. I get to relax a little bit. I'm not going to be pounding in as many big waves. Yeah. You know, so really, we're talking about it's a, it's a small segment of time yeah. that we're really going to have They start coming out more in force in, you know, December, January, yeah. February, March, then we're yeah. in trouble. Yeah, then we're that's, in trouble. that's where we get a break and we yeah. get fish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it really is a short period of time, but it's still, they, they do a lot of damage. I mean, millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. But we, you know, we can adjust our time that we go out. You can fish yeah. from 6 to 10 and then maybe pull a couple hours in the evening and yeah. adjust, that's a good point. adjust yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's for fishing. us. Yeah. But the docks are still getting chewed. Yeah. It's a lot easier That's just true. for us to live locally because we can pick and choose our yeah. time. Yeah. Throughout yeah. the summer, you know, day. somebody that comes <laughs> in and during their two weeks of yeah. vacation right. for the year and they feel, you know, it's like when I go to Canada, i got to be out there every daylight out, uh -huh. regardless. Because <laughs> yeah. it's your limited vacation time. Yeah. 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 You know, I won't be back in Canada for two years. I'm going to fish. Yeah, I'm not the, sure the people would come back and quit the same way. Well, the, the diehard fishermen, they really... Uh, I know it's a family deal a lot of times, but if you have a diehard fisherman, they really need to take advantage of wintertime fishing down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the best lake in the world. It didn't prove itself this year, but most time it's the best lake in the world for wintertime fishing. Yeah. You know, Wayne, we put some uh, graphs on our tournament graphs from uh, the previous winter, and um, it showed the, the winning average weight, the winning bag of, I think it was January, uh, or let's see, December, January, and February, those three months, and the average weight of the average winning bag was over 22 pounds. Oh, yeah. so I returned it. Yeah, so, last winter. So, you know, some of them were yeah. high, wow. some of them were low. Yeah, last winter yeah. was out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Most time it's that way every year. Right. Yeah, it sure yeah. is. So, um, I want to come back to uh, James Yellum, I remember. So, he had like three or four questions here. We answered one of them. Uh, the second one is, I read a lot about brush piles. I know we just discussed this, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it here. Um, I've heard a lot about brush piles, so where would I find most brush piles? Now, I have that question from a lot of members. Um, obviously, it takes a lot of, my opinion, it takes a lot of time on the water to actually locate them. Um, you know, you learn a lot about the lake when you're on the water, but I want you guys to answer. So where, what's the, uh, so where would I find the brush piles? In the coves near docks, secondary points are steep main lake points. I have not found much brush on the long sloping points that I have fished. So, um, why don't we start? You, you at the Missouri Department of Conservation actually planted some brush. Well, plants. probably the easiest oh. ones to find on the lake are going to be the Conservation Department ones mm -hmm. because they're on our website and the coordinates are provided. Okay. Um, there's also a iPhone and Android app called Find Mo Fish, which will show you all the brush piles that have been put in by the conservation department on all the lakes in the state. Mm -hmm. And it so you basically converts your your smartphone into a handheld GPS, mm -hmm. which you can use just like a handheld you know, GPS while you're in your boat and motor right over the top of the brush pile when you see it on a depth finder for a little yeah. Right. And I think we have that information on our website I, I think you uh, where people could take and, you know, download that information or go to your website right. and download those coordinates. So right. what areas of the lake have you planted those? On the lake, we've got a, a, a group of brush piles on the glaze. There's about 45 big brush piles 45. on the glaze. Wow. Yeah. On the Niagara, there are about uh, 60. And then on the upper graboids, way upper end of the graboids, there's about 30 or so. Wow, that's amazing. And what were you, and uh, we may have talked about this previously, or it's in one of our publications, but what was the material you used? Why did you chose those areas? They're, they're all cedar trees. Mm -hmm. They're all cedar trees. And the reason those areas were picked is there was some type of project going on mm -hmm. in that area. Uh, like on the Niangua, it was either a glade restoration or a parking lot expansion mm -hmm. for our program. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the upper gravelways, it was a glade restoration. The glades are these old hills like you see down in the southern right. part of the state, but a lot of them up here have grown over with cedars. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the, uh, the gravelways, that was a road clearing project, and the glades as well in conjunction with Lake Ozark State Park. Mm -hmm. And when you, so were, were most of the, when you clean those areas, or you cleared out those areas, you used those brush to drop them, 
did you just kind of drop them right there, or did what did you have a uh, what was your how did you choose where you were going to drop them? We've did, got did you want them in 20 feet, you know, depths? Or? What we tried to do is get them at least deep enough where they're not going to be exposed to the air under uh, like drawdown mm -hmm. in the winter. Because once wood's exposed to the air, it deteriorates a lot quicker. So we got them out deep into that. Most of the ones that we put out, the tops of them are going to be in at least 10 foot of water, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 foot of water at full pool. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are on points, little pockets, you know, we try to put them in areas that, that you know, we'd ever you know, caught fish in the past or we knew that anglers had to mm -hmm. catch fish. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans to put any more out anytime soon? It's or can point, we convince you to just put some more out? <laughs> I, I'd like to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that we're limited to here, because the shoreline of this lake is privately owned, Right. Uh, I don't have the luxury like the biologist on, say, Truman or Stockton or Table Rock do, where they can just run up to the bank, chop a tree down, and gotcha. drag it out. Right, right. So yeah, uh, yeah. we're, we're kind of limited in that sense. Well, Plus, we don't have a boat right here. Uh, yeah. have, having a dedicated habitat barge for mm -hmm. the Ozarks would be, would be very helpful. Right. right. Well, keep us posted if, yeah. uh, if anything changes or okay. there's plans. You know, so we can make sure our members all, you know, have that information. So, so I got one quick question yeah. I want to ask you, the biologist. Uh, I heard a, a rumor one time that here in the Glaze Arm, we're, we've got a lot of state park. And I heard that you can go up there in the state park, cut down a cedar tree, drag it down a little lake, and, and make a, a brush pond. Is that true? No. No, okay, that's not true. I did, years ago, I did a hinge cutting project on the park. Uh, where we went up and we focused mainly on sycamore trees. They didn't didn't want to cut the post oaks or some of the other hardwood trees. So we concentrated on sycamores, but no, they were very specific about what, you know, they're trying to keep this as much a natural area as possible. Good. So, so no, cutting cutting trees on the, on the sick park is a, is a no. That's, that's, that's what I thought, but just, this is a good place to get that out, yeah. get everybody, you know, any kind of rumors, Oh, this is a good way to talk to a lot of fishermen yeah. and make sure nobody's doing anything they're not supposed to be doing. So what is the actual law, rule, whatever it would be as far as sinking brush or cover or what can you sink, what can't you sink? There's um, there's no... You know, what is, I get that question a lot. You know, yeah. Is it okay to sink these, you know? You know, Amherst is the one that, that monitors what goes on around the lake as far as shoreline development. Mm -hmm. And they're not concerned about brush going in. Uh, they do ask that you weight it right. adequately so it doesn't you know, float to the surface and become a boating hazard. Mm -hmm. But really, you know, we've looked at a lot of different lakes in the state. We've looked at artificial brush piles made out of PVC, mm -hmm. hardwoods, cedars, and you can't beat hardwoods or cedars. Right. Uh, in the past, people have used like railroad ties old tires, and those are things you really want to steer clear of. There's some really nasty chemicals that can leach right. out of those, especially old tires. Oklahoma does that all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah, Grand big, Lake. Big tire. Grand Lake has, they uh, use them for, like we use our uh, wave brakes, they use them big uh, tractor tires yeah. for our wave brakes down there. You know, up on edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a great fisher, and it's oh, a great yeah. way to catch fish. Think about tires, though. You know, they spend their whole lives out on the roadways driving through yeah. petroleum products. That yeah, and they are petroleum. Right, and, and they, they are. It soaks into that right. rubber, right. Right. and when you put it in a leg, it leaches out. Yeah. <laughs> Is the, so, uh, the rod holders that you see on all the docks, can you, can you, I mean, we see, when we're out fishing, a lot of times we'll, you know, those docks that have those rod holders, you yeah. think there's probably brush. And She's that could be a nice you, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, nice I was going to ask you why you. you're on a guide trip to Denise's point. Yeah, if you, don't have, if you don't have the electronics maybe to see those brush mm -hmm. piles That's or right. the visual part of those yeah. rod holders a that, lot of that's times. That's something I've done for be. years. Yeah, you know, we all I'm, have. If I'm going down the bank and there's a, a dock with a 30-foot triple engine scarab and two jet skis, I'm going to go right by that one. And I'm going to go two docks down where there's a rod holder, a chair, a stump, yeah. they old, use a stump. A 14 yeah, foot ridge uh, line with a 15 crates. horse on it because that's the one that's going to have brush. Yeah, he's he's not going to go. If you look for uh, crappie rods, a group of crappie rods, you know, maybe uh, 
a dock slip that has rope and stuff, you know, to keep you out of there. <laughs> You know there's brush in there. Yeah, yeah. they're the ones you just go to the side, yeah. you flip Probably through. Right. On the tree. Right, yeah. exactly. You can yeah. tell the lights, they've right. taken that time and effort to uh, install a, a dust and dawn light or light to track bugs. Just like he's saying, you can tell a, a, you tell a, a fisherman, a, a, fisherman a sportsman yeah. of some sort, yeah. you know, they, there, they, they've got signs. Along with the docks, is there any other type of structure like to James uh, Yellum's point, is there any type of structure that you find more